some yellow and then putting that up at the top. It, if you have a blow dryer, it would be nice for you to get one and plug it in close to you there because after we paint this sky and blend and make the sky here, we're going to remove our tape and we need this to be, especially the, near the horizon, we need it to be dry because we're gonna put another piece of tape on our sky so that we can get a nice straight horizon line of the, of the ocean water. So is everybody, everybody with me? Thumbs up so I can see that you're ready to go. Good? Okay. You can always, you can always let um, Wendy know in the chat if you have a question or if I need to slow down. So starting, got your circle on. Mm -hmm. So with my palette knife as a mixing tool, I'm gonna to be taking my palette knife and tur turning it one side, scraping it, turning it back and forth. And I'm just gonna start mixing. I can tell I need a little bit more of the banana there just to get it mixed a little bit on there. Just like you were frosting a cake. I'll wipe off my palette knife so I'll be good to go next time. And now taking my one inch brush and holding it loosely in my hand, I'm gonna go back and forth. And if you find that your paint is dragging a little bit, you may need to dip your brush in the water. I want to keep my dark down close to the horizon line. And it's gonna just blend up to the orange in the middle. And I think I need a little more of the brown. So I put a little brown on my brush here, add it here to the low horizon. And what you're looking for is just this sl really slow, gradual pr value progression from your burnt sienna up through to your orange. And while my paint is still wet, I'm just gonna take my brush and squeeze it off with my paper towel. I don't need to wash my brush. I just need to dry it off here with my paper towel. And now I'm going to go up here and do the same thing with my yellow. Um, the canvases we're working on tonight are nine by 12. So if you're working on a larger canvas, you may need more paint. Working on an eight by 10, you got plenty of paint. <laughs> so I have my yellow easily, you know, smoothly spread out so I don't have any clumps across my canvas and it's covering my canvas. I don't want it to be transparent. And now I'm going to take and now that I've got it mixed to the top, I'm going to start working my brush down into the orange. And bring that orange up into the up into the uh, top of my canvas, leaving the very top of my canvas with just the yellow. So it's always good for you to take it, hold it at arm's reach away from you. If you need to, when whenever you're trying to look at value, it really helps if you squint. If you just squint your eyes until all you can see is the value change. And if it looks smooth from the, the orangey brown down here on the horizon up to the yellow, then you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Don't you find, I mean, colors have feelings with them, right? So usually yellow I think of as being like sunny, um, happy and stuff. But when the yellow starts toning yeah. down into oranges or it's into the- like a Burnt sienna. It just this it is just a sun, and it's just kind of a like a. And that's they call what it our a, is about. This the day is ending. 
it's just like a, like a little a picture, picture of the sun, like a sunrise. And mm -hmm. um, this is the horizon right here. Here's the sun. Mm -hmm. And she's just instructing, you know, my okay. colors are all messed up. If you are, if you are following along on the directions, we are on number three, so we've we've got our basic sky in. So while that's drying a little bit, you can wash off your one inch brush in your water bucket and dry it off with your paper towel. Oh, oh, this is important to get your one inch brush clean. So get it clean now and dry it off. Set it off to the side. So on your painting palette, while your sky is drying there, you're going to get your lemon yellow, your light your light yellow, use your palette knife to make a spot of yellow on your palette. And white. Do a different spot of white, don't mix them yet. So I'm wiping off my palette knife, getting my white paint, putting my palette knife in there and getting a little glob of white paint. Wipe off my palette knife. Okay. With my yellow and white now, I'm going to use my palette knife to mix a light yellow. Lemon yellow is a little brighter than the medium yellow, but I want to, I'm just using my palette knife to mix up some yellow here on my, can you see the yellow on my palette? Then we'll do some palette knife work. So remember, I wiped off my palette knife. Here's the bottom of my palette knife. Here's the top of it. Let me see where I'm at. And I'm using my, I'm right-handed, so I'm using my index finger here to press my knife down, okay? So now I'm going to take my white and yellow, my light yellow, and I'm going to scrape it up on one edge of my palette knife. So let me see if I can get this up there so you can see it. See how this is the bottom of my palette knife. See how I've scraped that up? So now taking and making like horizontal cutting lines. If you did a couple months ago with us, the winter calm painting, the, the winter painting, we use the same type of thing in our water. But we're going to have about an inch down from the top of your of your canvas, you're gonna make some, I can't remember what these are called, striated clouds, like the ones that just cut across. Going back and scooping up on the edge. As the sun is as the sun is setting, it's actually highlighting the bottom of the clouds here. So as you work towards the top of your canvas, your clouds are going to get these little streaks are going to get whiter. Okay. I'm 
bring this around. So here's the finished painting, as you can see. So we have some of these yellow clouds here going horizontally across with the very underside of the clouds near the top has the white on it. When you're happy with those clouds, wipe your palette knife off so it's nice and clean. If you have fingernails, which I don't, <laughs> You could pick at it, but we're going to peel off your sun. So get a little edge of your tape. You can use the edge of, I, like, I just use the edge of my palette knife, but you're going to kind of pick at the edge of your sun sticker, stencil, and then pull, off, pull it off. So there's my, I pulled off my sun sticker. Off that away. With your small brush, come back with just white and paint your sun white. So this is how you can um, make smooth those little, the edges there from the edge of the tape. So just paint your sun, your circle there, all white. I'm just dipping the paint right straight out of my little cup here. If you're using two paint, you could actually just squirt a little glob of white right on your sun. But with your white, you can, we're going to put clouds over the sun and stuff. So you do not have to have super sharp edges on your, on your sun. But I'm just cleaning up where I pulled up the tape or maybe a little bit of the paint got under the tape. I saw an amazing, uh, I thought it was amazing, <laughs> amazing, uh, art tutorial yesterday. It was the Lion King. And they had taken little strips of masking tape. And they had drawn a um, like the silhouette of a lion with the with the striped, you know, with the pointy zigzag mane and then the forehead and the nose over here. And they had done it with little pieces of tape, just putting the little tape on like that. And then they did this same coloring, this same burnt sienna, orange, yellow, variegated with a little, they'd had a small little sun in it. And um, it was amazing. They had a little silhouette down here of, um, you know, like on the, towards the neck of the lion, it was a little silhouette of, of, uh, of them against the, uh, just the silhouette of the animal. And then when they pulled the tape off, you saw the zigzag mane. It looked really amazing. So there's a lot you can do with tape to create silhouettes and stencils. They look amazing. And then when you pull the tape off, it's just like awe-inspiring. So I'm going to let my, my white dry on my sun there. You can, with your finger, you can check how your horizon is drying. I don't even have to blow dry mine, mine's all dry. So while our sun is drying, let's go ahead and take off your blue horizon tape. So again, you wanna make sure that this Burnt sienna here is dry. Uh, you can tell too when you hold it up to the light, because if it's dry, it'll be matte, it'll be dull. Anywhere that's still got a shine to it means it's still got a little bit of wet paint on it.
So I'm just taking mine and looking at it at an angle in the light to make sure that it's all matte there, that it's, it's all dry. Horizon lines are always straight, even though we lived in a curved world, <laughs> they always appear horizontal, straight. So we want to make sure that when we paint our C here, that when it meets the, the sky, that it's a straight line. So that's why we're gonna take a new piece of tape. And this time we're gonna match the edge of the tape to the bottom of where you have painted. So I'm masking off that bottom of the burnt, burnt sienna and pressing it down with my fingers and just tuck it on the side. It doesn't have to be pressed down tight on the side, but it's this bottom edge of your tape that you want to like seal. Mine was already dry. If it if it is still wet, yeah, hit it with the hair dryer. Just make sure that your burnt umber is is completely dry. Okay, now I'm taking a look at my sky, which is still a little bit damp. So I'm going to work on my palette. <clears throat> I'm just going to do it with my small brush, I guess. So I'm going to take some medium yellow. And I'm going to get some light yellow or lemon yellow we have. I'm going to get a dab of orange here on my palette. And last but not least, we'll put a little white. I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and use our I guess I'm gonna put the paint on with my small brush. So here on my palette, I have white, lemon yellow, medium yellow, and orange. So remember our variation in our value here, how we went from light, light yellow, to medium yellow, to the orange, to the burnt sienna. We're gonna do the same with our sun. So I'm gonna take a little, of the medium yellow mixed with the orange. That's gonna be like my bottom line across the bottom of the sun. And then it's going to get more yellow as it comes up here in the sun. And I'm not completely covering my sun. I'm simply just kind of pushing the sun back into the sky with my colors. First, because whatever is light will come towards you. Whatever's dark moves away from you. So right now when we have our sun just this big white circle in our paper, it's just like bouncing straight out towards us. So now we want to tuck it back into the into the clouds, into the sky. I'm going to mix a little a little of the um, burnt sienna here on the bottom of it. And, 
and to give it a little three-dimensional look like it's not just a flat circle like it's actually rounded it's darker at the bottom so now i'm going to move up to my lemon yellow mix it with a little bit of the white for my color up here And with all that, so let me hold this up so you can see. So this is what my sun is looking like right now. Has kind of some little clouds floating in front of it. So I'm gonna go back to my palette knife now. I'm smushing my colors together, getting them on the bottom of my palette knife. And I'm just gonna, horizontally drag some of those across the sun. This so is something you need to hold at arm's distance on that. Away, away from you to see. And I'm going to let that sit and dry now, and we're going to move on to the water. Um, the, the clouds are not completely finished, so don't worry if, if it doesn't, if, if, the, if the sky doesn't look quite right yet to you. We're going to come back with some red and with our burnt sienna, and we're going to add some red closer down here and across the bottom of the sun. But we'll do that. That actually comes up in like step 14. So, so just let that sit for now. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask before we move on to our C? Anybody need to catch up? Take this opportunity to take a deep breath. And let loose of your let your grip loosen up a little bit on your on your palette knife or your brush. Hold on and talk for a second about next month. Yep, that's so, good. Can yeah. you guys hear me if I talk from over here or should I unmute at my computer? You're fine. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. I didn't want to unmute my computer if I didn't have to because it causes an echo. Can you hear me if I'm just talking like this? Can you hear me on Lori's computer? I can hear you on Julie's computer. Actually, phone. Okay. Um, so next month, we're having kind of a special paint night. Um, because the summer reading program starts at the library on June 7th. And so for everybody who lives in and around American Fork, we have a lot of stuff planned and you can get a kit with all kinds of fun activities and encouragement for reading and there are all kinds of prizes. And one of the perks for registering and participating in summer reading this year is that you get dibs on signing up for next month's paint night. And so I am going to... In person. Yes, and we are planning on doing it in person next month. So this is the painting Ooh. next month where I'm sh I just am sharing my screen here. Mm -hmm. um, there you go. Mm -hmm. A lot of similarities between the right? We're doing just another sunset kind of painting. Um, but because our summer reading program is Tales and Tales, um, 
animals and stories that just happens to be our um, grassland week uh, theme that we're doing this painting. And so we're letting people who are participating in summer reading uh, register first. So in your summer reading kit, if you do summer reading, there is a special link that you can go to to register for this paint night. However, we're opening it up to everybody else on June, I thought I had it up right here and I didn't, on June uh, 11th. So that's the Friday before we have paint night. Paint night will be on June 17th at seven like always, but we're opening it up to, if there are spaces left, we are opening up registration, which I imagine there will be some, especially um, if you wanna provide your own stuff. But just so you know, it won't be open on June 1st like it normally is. It will open on June 11th unless you're participating in summer reading, which means you have a special exclusive link um, to sign up for Paint Night first. So I just wanted everybody to know um, that's why Paint Night won't show up on Eventbrite on June 1st like it normally would. Um, but those of you who only join us uh, over Zoom, who don't live around here, should be able to join the, uh, the provide your own materials, the no kit tickets. There should be plenty of those um, left. If you uh, look or if you're signed up to get notifications, you'll get notified on the 11th when those tickets open up. So hopefully everybody's all caught up to where we are on the painting now and I will stop talking um, and let okay. Lori take it back over. Okay. So well, let's I take want... a look at the finished painting here so you know where you're headed now. So our focus, we had two focuses for tonight. One on value, which we're getting, we're going to get both of the, the, the top and the bottom here are, are experiences in value, but also in reflections. Because when you look at this painting from a distance, you can really see, we really are looking for getting this highlighted, this reflection of the sun going down on this calm evening on the sea. And the way, so that's what we're gonna start to work on. And as, in order to get a re reflection or you have to have a shadow, in order to get a highlight, you have to have a shadow. Can't have a highlight without a shadow. So our shadow is coming from the fact that the sun here, is casting its last rays straight across the water here towards you. So our shaded sides of the water are gonna be the right side and the left side. And so with our darkest brown, like how we started, I'm going to take and use my palette knife and I'm gonna use it like a little spoon. I'm gonna scoop up my brown and put it down on the left side, scoop up some brown, put it down on the right side. Make sure my horizon tape is pressed down. Wipe off the palette knife. That's why I go through a whole roll of paper towel. Okay. And now in the center of my painting, I am going to be putting my orange. This is, we're going to be doing this in layers. So we have brown, orange, brown. Wipe off your palette knife while the paint is nice and wet. And now you pick up your, your one inch brush. And we kind of want it to be cleaned off. So we're gonna do something a little different tonight. I want you to turn your canvas 90 degrees. So you are now looking at it. You're right-handed, you'd be looking at it with the sun and the sky is up here on the right side. And I'm looking at my paint colors here in a row. You're left-handed. I guess you would turn it this way, 90 degrees. And I'm going to start, dip my brush a little in the water so the paint will flow. And I'm gonna start by spreading my orange out. 
And I'm going to take it right down to the bottom, right up to the horizon. Okay. So holding it here, I'm just mixing this orange up through the middle. Now I'm going to take, I could take and just wipe my brush off on a paper towel a little bit. And now I'm going to take my brown, mixing it here on the sides. Well, the way my painting is going, I'm, I'm, it's the bottom right now. <laughs> wipe my brush so it's, it's getting wiped off on the, on the towel. And now I'm going to just take and blend the orange and the brown together. Notice, unlike what we did with the sky, I'm painting this sideways. And I'm not sweeping it all the way across my painting. I'm just going from what was my right side, but it's now the bottom because I turned my painting. Could you have, it, look at it from a distance? People Again, muted. You could have this value change from dark to orange. Okay, now I'm going to take and just dry off my brush. Don't put it in the water anymore. Dry it off on a paper towel. Now I'm going to come up here to the brown. Bring it in here from the top. Till I meet the orange. Okay. Wipe my brush off. So I'm wiping my brush on my paper towel. Now I'm going to come back. And I'm going to blend the brown into the orange. And now when I turn my canvas back so it's right side up, you're already, even with just the two colors, you're starting to see this sun reflection coming on the water here. I'm going to put a little bit more, a little darker brown on the very edges here. Just to give a little more of that contrast of the, the sea that's outside the, the lit area of the, the last rays of the sun is, is dark. And if you, if you feel like the orange is not blended real well, you can wipe off your brush and you can pick up a little bit more orange on the end of your brush. You can put a little more orange on there. right down the center. Okay, I'm gonna say that's looking okay. I'm gonna wash my brush. I think I have more orange paint on my fingers than I do on the <laughs> <laughs> it's like powerful. It's like everywhere. <laughs> so I really like the darkness on the outer edges of the water. Let me show you the finished one here. And my painting that I'm doing tonight, 
don't know if I just had my paint, it's kind of light, but I'm gonna take a little black on my dry brush and bring it in from the outside edge in. Just, I want just a little more, a little more of that dramatic value change where the, the last rays of the sun can't quite reach that wide. Okay, that's our first layer of water. Now we're going to work on our reflections. So we're going to be working with our palette knife in that horizontal kind of slicing horizontally motion. So I washed my brush off, dried it, set it down. I need to get some paint on my palette here. My plate is pretty much dry. So, I'm gonna put some orange on my palette, a medium yellow on my palette, And last, my light yellow. So your dark, if you turn your palette sideways again, so I'm looking at my water here up and down in a vertical way here. Should be pretty dry. I'm going to go back before we do our palette knife work. I'm going to come back with my brush that I've cleaned and dried with a paper towel. And I am, I am pouncing my brush in my paint. Okay, so I got orange. And I'm just going to pounce it on my, right down this middle part. Give it a light sweep. Now I'm going to wipe my brush with my paper towel and go to my medium yellow. So here's my medium yellow and I'm again, I'm just holding my brush vertical like 90 degrees and just pouncing it on my medium yellow paint. I'm gonna come down here and give myself some yellow reflections as the sun, the sun is hitting the, the last rays of the sun are hitting the water and the beautiful colors in the sky are reflecting off the water here. And wipe your brush with the paper towel. And now just lightly blend those. Again, I've turned my can, I've turned my canvas 90 degrees. So I'm doing this. It's it's easier for me. It's easier for me to sweep up and down than it is sideways. So this is why I've turned my canvas so I can just sweep the reflections up and down. And now we go to our lightest yellow, the lemon yellow. Pouncing it in my palette, pounce it on the, down the middle here of my canvas. All of this layering is just adding, going to be building up our reflections. 
Once I have some color laid down, then I just lightly, very ever so lightly, my the bristles on my brush are just barely touching my canvas, just enough to blend that a little bit out. Okay, so we have been using our canvas on the side, blending from dark at the top to orange to our lighter yellows reflecting here in the middle, then a slow gradual transition back to the orange, the brown, and back to the very darkest on the edge. Okay, so now turn your canvas back, hold it up at eyes, arms reach, squint your eyes, see those amazing values in there. Now we're gonna go to our palette work. So wash your brush. I just think it, I've got a garbage can here that I can smack my brush on to, luckily we're in a room where, you know, <laughs> I can do that. I remember watching Bob Ross videos. He was always smacking his brush on the edge of his canvas or on his palette or on the garbage, just flick that off there. <laughs> I'm gonna take and get some white on my, palette because it's all in my little cup right now. This is kind of like what we did with the sun. So the sun is reflecting down here on the water. So I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm going to dip it in my oranges, my orange. So I'm getting it on the edge. So here's my palette knife. Here's the bottom of my palette knife. Here's a, let me get it here. Here's the top of my palette knife. Here's the bottom of my palette knife. You can see where I have the oranges. So I'm going to take, and I am going to use this kind of a stroke. I am going to just kind of skip across the water. And where I want my orange pounce strokes, just pouncing on the water, because they're, the sun is, what's happening is the sun is catching the waves, right? So I'm going to put some oranges out here into the into the dark water. Just the tops of the waves are catching are catching a little bit of light. If I hold this up so you can see it a little better. See, I'm just I'm I'm putting the for me, left-handed, I'm putting the left edge, or right-handed, I'm putting the left edge of my palette knife in the orange. And now I'm just going to pounce here where the dark water is meeting the, the lighter colored orange water. And I'm gonna put some tops of these little waves. Does that help you to see it a little closer? I'm feeling some tension, so I need to take a deep breath, relax my shoulders down so they're not scrunching up to my ears. <laughs> Pick up some more orange on the edge of my palette knife, and now I'm going to do the same kind of little pouncing strokes onto, well, I worked on my left side first, so now I'm over here on the right side of my C. You can kind of hear the, the palette knife just kind of scraping across the water there. And when I have the orange done, I'm gonna work up in values now. So I wipe off my, wipe off my uh, palette knife. Now I'm going to my medium yellow. So I'm just working up from orange to medium yellow, to lemon yellow, to white at last. So I'm taking my palette knife and I'm 
and I'm kind of slicing it through my medium yellow. There's the top of my palette knife. There's the underside of my palette knife. So now I'm gonna do my yellow, same kind of little pouncing strokes, only I'm coming a little closer into the center. Uh, the, the highlights on the waves will get a little lighter in value. They went from the orange, now they're going to the yellow. I just find it very helpful to squint my eyes. When you, when you squint them, the, all the details, which we don't really have any details in this painting, but it makes the colors all blend to where you can just see values. And you can see where you've got, you're starting to create that lightness coming through the, the center of your work. And after I do the medium yellow, I'll wipe off my palette knife, pounce it into the lemon yellow. Now with the lemon yellow, I'm going to be making these little horizontal pouncing wave marks, but I'm staying right in the middle of my painting, right in the middle of the sea. How's everybody doing? Doing good? Yay, yay. I see some thumbs up. Also with my lemon yellow, I want to be heavy on the horizon line. So up here, right at the bottom of your tape, you want to put quite a few little lemon yellow wave marks. White will be the last one that we do with our palette knife. So again, I'm just getting white on the edge of my palette knife, kind of pouncing, bouncing my palette knife in the white. So I just have it on the edge. And with the white, the white highlights are going to be a little wider at your horizon line. So they can go a little wider than your lemon yellow did, right at only at the horizon line there. And then down the center, and we really want the white to fade out about halfway down the center of your of your C. Right, if you're sitting on the beach looking at this. The, the sky is coming, the sun is coming down low in the sky. So it's going to hit the back of the horizon there, be lightest. And then it's actually the water as it gets closer to you at the beach is actually going to get darker. Right? It's going to be lightest at the back end. You can add a few little maybe highlights to the waves down like this, but the majority of your white is white at the horizon line and then down the center fading out as you come down okay some of you that are painting with a friend hold your painting up arm distance away and have your friend take a look at it 
squint at it. See if it looks like it's, if you're catching that, if you're catching that horizon, the reflection there. I know Donna and Jenny, you guys paint together. How are you doing? Each one doing good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. I hope some of you are looking forward to summer and actually maybe seeing this kind of a kind of a scene in person. I, on the other hand, who am moving home to Montana, we have our van packed and we have a van and a car. So we're driving up this week and it's actually my dad's 87th birthday tomorrow. We're going to leave our van up there. So we're taking a lot of our food stuff and we're taking our winter clothing. Not just because winters up in Montana can be very cold, but because there is a snow advisory tomorrow and it's only supposed to be about 36 degrees. So we are taking our coats and our mittens so that when we get out at the truck stops to go to the bathroom, we'll have to bundle up and hopefully we won't have snow on the road, too much freezing on the road. But by, by Tuesday, it's supposed to warm back up to 60. But wouldn't you know, the day we're traveling, there's a snow advisory, 21st of May. My birthday is the end of May, and I remember so many times as a, as a little girl getting so mad that it would snow on my birthday. And I'm like, what the heck? It's the end of May. <laughs> so with this trying now, we're going to add in some little, uh, well, we'll wait and add our little white sparkles on the water for at the very end. So we can come back here. I'm, I'm done with my reflections in the water. So now I'm going to peel off my horizon tape and go back to working on the clouds a little bit. So see how nice that is when you peel off that horizon tape? What a nice straight horizon it gives you. So there's, there's my painting without the tape on it now. So you can see where the sky meets the, meets the sea. Remember I told you we weren't quite done with the sky. We need to bring in, let me hold up the finished one. Let me see it a little better. See this red brown in here? I know the bird sienna is kind of a reddish brown, orangish brown, but we're actually, this is where we're gonna use our red paint. We're gonna mix our red with our bird sienna and we're gonna come in here with our one inch brush kind of dry. There's a good example right here. Can you see the red, the red low clouds that are coming in here on the low horizon. That's what we're gonna be working on now. So we want on your palette, you want to have some of your burnt sienna. Oh, what am I? Oh my God. Into the garbage. Oh, there it is. That heel is in the garbage, not on our newly laid carpet in the library. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and then I'm going to open up my red. Um, the red is pretty powerful, so you only need just a little dollop of it on your, on your, uh, palette. So I here I have my burnt sienna and my red. I'm going to use my palette knife to just kind of mix it in. Almost looks like dark blood. <laughs> kind of a rusty red color it makes. 
Now that I've got it mixed, I'm going to wipe my palette knife off because I don't want any of the straight red to be in it. Okay, using the same technique that we did when we put the light clouds uh, horizontally across the top of our canvas, I'm going to put, here's my, here's my color. I'm going to put it on the back of my palette knife. For this one, let me show you. Top of my palette knife, bottom of my palette knife. So can you see I'm not just scooping it up on the edge. I'm actually have paint uh, on the bottom of my palette knife. I'm gonna pounce it a little bit just cause I don't want it to be really globby when I put it on. And now I'm going to come in. I'm not touching my canvas yet. I just want to show you. I'm coming in like this from the right side. And I'm just going to bring in some clouds. Get a little bit more paint. And I'm going to come in from the left side. If you need to, go ahead and turn your canvas around. So it's whatever is comfortable for your hand. I just want to keep the clouds horizontal though. Coming in with some side strokes. Both, both angles, I mean, both sides. I can also bring a little bit of this reddish brown up here to the bottom of my sun. Hold it out at arm's reach, squint your eyes, see how that's looking. And you just decide how much of the dark, low-lying clouds you need. Just like we put our white highlights heavy and wide across the middle, we can put our red clouds across the middle also. So I have to tell you a cute art story here. <laughs> Let that dry for a little bit. If you feel like you need to add a little bit more, a little bit more of this um, up here now, all your colors are dry up here, so they're not gonna mix. So if you'd like to wipe your palette knife off and add a little more of the, lighter colored clouds across the top. Can. So my daughter, my second daughter, who, Rebecca, who lives up in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, she, um, with her church group last night, the girls, they, they had a mother-daughter paint night and it was really a fun thing. They each had a canvas and they had, they live in the Tetons. So they had some um, reference photos of the grant of the Tetons, the Grand Teton and the Teton mountains there. And Becky doesn't have a daughter, her, she has two boys. And so they were off doing other things. So there was a little 13 year old girl that was, uh, didn't have her mom, didn't have mom with her. So Becky joined up with her. So the whole idea for the paint night was they turned their canvases sideways 
and they took the, the painting, the reference painting they were given, folded it in half and cut it. And then they each painted, they each painted the, the mountains as they saw them together. And so Becky had a really good time doing that. And yeah. she uh, was taking her little second grader, Owen, to school this morning. And the painting was sitting on the back of the car seat, or, you know, in the back seat, in the back seat. And Owen got in the car and he said, Mom, did you paint this? And she says, yeah, that's my painting from last night. He said, Mom, it is beautiful. And she said, he was holding it in his lap the whole way to school and was just like looking at it with such love. There was just like a tear in his eye. He was, and he said, can I please hang this up in my room? <laughs> oh, I'll have to see if I could pull it up on the. Um. Oh, I have paintings that I painted in their room. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if we'll be able to see this. This is the little girl she painted with. Let me see. And there's their two. Can you see those? There are two paintings of the of the mountains. Anyway, I thought, what a neat idea. How about a, a mother-child paint night and you each paint half and put the paintings together? So let's go with our black and our fine brush and you can decide what what you if if you want something silhouetted you can you can do that um you can just decide what you would like to be silhouetted if you want to have this look like it's closer to land you can actually put like a little palm frond, a little trunk and a little palm frond, like there's a little bit of land on this side. I'm gonna put a little, uh, be careful where you're laying your hand here that you don't, uh, cause some of the, some of those highlights you put on the water there might, it was, the paint was kind of thick. It might, it might still be a little bit wet, but just using your, using your fine tip brush and your black, Go ahead and give yourself a little silhouette. You see that very good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Depending on how far away, you can put a, a little stick person. <laughs> Hello, poop. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to put a little pole up here. Add a little sail. Put um, around my, my mass there, at the, around the center pole, I'm going to put a little, uh, a little curve that I'll leave open so it looks like the sail is kind of blowing there. So I saw Bonnie was on. I, I'm not sure if it's the same Bonnie that was from Florida that did our Zentangling. Is it? I'm not sure. I don't know if that's her or not. Uh, but that's you, Bonnie. Say hi. I was so excited. I just spent last from last Friday uh, through Monday. I did a, I joined a Zentangle certified Zentangle teacher seminar. Um, that was virtual. So I did eight hours of Zentangling for four days in a row and I loved it. And there were um, 421 participants in 27, 37 different countries all over the world who were all drawing at the same time. And so now I'm a, a certified Zentangle teacher. So I hope to be able to, to, um, have some Zentangling classes. So I'm gonna add some little birds, but I'm gonna show you on a, 
you know, paper towel, I'll do it on my plate here. So when you make a little, a little silhouette of a flying bird, you might want to put a little water on your brush just so your paint is a little smoother. So I'm going to do it large here so you can see it. But you want it to look like a, a stretched out M. Let's see if I can get this, my plate is curved. Um, let me try it on a paper towel. I'll see here. So. It's like you took an M and you pulled out the side. So can you see that kind of a kind of a look? So you can take this little shape if you want to add if you want to add some little birds. I like to dip my brush and then roll it so it's a little point. And I'm just gonna put a few little birds. It's just important to have that little dip of a V in the in the center of your bird. Uh, you know how sometimes people just paint birds and they look like a V? Like it's like, ugh, and my waters. Can I see that? We want it to look more like an M. We want a, a wing, a little dip, and then a wing. So like, and anyway. Yeah, yeah, because their 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 wings kind of, go out a lot and then they've got the little body and then they have longer wings. And of course the ones that are farther away are going to look are going to be smaller, right? That's the that's the perspective of it. Things get smaller the farther away they go. That's my So I've added a few little seagulls off for the night and the and then I'm going to go back to my water, wash off your white brush. I mean, your little brush. But I'm going to go back for the white. So I'm going to go back. Here you can see these little white dots. That's just the last of the sun's reflection. A little bit of glitter almost like glitter glistening on the top of the water. Okay, so I do my white and I'm just gonna come in here and add some little white dots, just little glints, glistening sparkles of water. Just put a little love in it, just love in those waves. Loving those last rays of the sun, ready for a nice calm night. I like to think of grace as God's help. So here we are at the end of the day and made it through whatever the day held just with the help of God. And now we're just going, we'll get up in the morning and it'll be a new day new experiences. Okay, and last but not least, end with owning it thankful that you had the time to spend so that we had the time tonight to spend together i'm so thankful for the opportunity the library and wendy have given me to to share this with you so we'll put our make sure when you put your signature on that you're not you're not painting it on your tape if you happen to put your uh if you happen to uh, tape off your borders. My paint is so thick now because it's been sitting out. It's 
hard to get it to want to paint a letter. Okay, so tonight's focus is on value and reflection. And now we can take off our tape. I just love taping the edges because it just gives it such a such, such a finish right away. If you yeah, if you were to paint, if you were to frame it, of course, most of the white would be under the frame. Um, remember, for those of you that live here in American Fork or nearby, you can bring your you're encouraged to bring your paintings into the library. Uh, Wendy will spray them with a matte finish and seal them and then don't forget to come pick them back up. It'll be nice next month to be able to meet in person and actually see everybody's work in person. But we are also Zooming next month. So we'll we'll Zoom the in-person. So some of us will be in person. Yeah. And some of us will still be on Zoom. So that is a finished evening grace.